Hello everyone and welcome back to my Let's Play of Pester Quest. Last time we hung out with Jake and tried to help him sort out his uh, various relationship issues with uh, mixed results. But today, we are going to hang out with my absolute favorite alpha kid, Roxy, L Roxy Lalonde. And um, quick disclaimer, I will be using she, her pronouns for Roxy because this takes place about the same time Act 6 starts. But if Roxy asks, asks me to use anything different, then I will. So let's get started. Friendship Wazard. You spent a good few days fucking around with your newest friends. They seem to be on their respective paths toward something. You're not exactly sure if self-actualization is a part of it, but you're trying not to be to not be too bent up about it. This Earth's friend group seems to have a lot of uh, interpersonal complexity. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. To be fair, you do only really know half of the friendship quadrangle. It's probably past time to meet the other two corners of it. See what all the fuss is about. Get their side of all the drama before you leap it to any more judgments. You've thought a lot about what you said to Jake and what you wanted to say but didn't. You're ashamed at the thought that you might also be erring passively on the side of friendship sloshes uncomfortably in your belly against the fear that you may be choosing too much, wanting too much, changing too much. Because you've thought a lot about what Jade said to you too. Oh yeah, Jade um, was very unnerved about our actions in general. <laughs> That's probably why you bothered to get Roxy's address from Jane. You can't exactly stop making new friends because you aren't ready to think about what your purpose would be without that. But maybe you could do it the old-fashioned way this time. Showing up on somebody's doorstep via the accepted human method of following directions to their domicile-specific government side number seems like it might be a better start than, oh, just zapping directly to them when they're taking a shit or something. Which is definitely a hypothetical situation, not all something that happened to you recently. Anyway, you've come up with a plan and everything. You're not a real man man mailman that you know of, but you've grown to appreciate and respect the profession, so you don't mind LARPing it once more. You wonder briefly if, you, if there might be other guises under which people might go up to another person's house and knock on their door, but almost none of your friends ever leave their fucking rooms, so you sure wouldn't know. That, I mean, that's a good point. <laughs> also, why are we in a forest? I know that, um, Rose has a forest outside of her house, but this is, this is Roxy, and, uh, Roxy lives on that, um, like, structured chessboard place out in the middle of the ocean. I don't think there was a forest there. Are we not in the right timeline? Are we still are we still in Jane's time period and we have to go forward in time first? You zip down the street from her house and walk up to the long scary driveway through the trees, over a bridge and up to her door. Okay, so not exactly a normal human method. What, were you supposed to stroll all the way for, to New York from Jane's place? She offered you bus money, but then remembered her fortune is tainted. She vacillated between giving you every single one of her dollars and burning it all in a symbolic bonfire until the two of you landed on moving it to a new, hopefully untraceable bank account. You're really not sure how deep the batter witch's surveillance goes, but Jane seems satisfied at least. She's going through a lot. You know how it is, having to endure huge life and upending bouts of information being tossed to you more or less weekly yourself. So yeah, you skipped a step in your male personally sojourn. But you made it to Roxy's house in a respectable manner, which was the whole point. You're gonna make the fuck out of a good impression. You knock and you wait. That is mom. Hi. Mom looks good. I wonder if that means we're going to meet uh, Dirk's bro too. Because I, I would be happy about that. The person who comes to the door is not Roxy. At least she doesn't look like the photo of Roxy Jane showed you. Oh fuck, unless Roxy's a catfish? You did not expect this. Oh, it's you. This could be interesting. You blink. It is you. She got that part right. Do you know her? You scour her features. She does seem familiar like a friend you almost had or did have very long ago or moderately long ago depending on the perspective you're looking at time from. You wonder, have the two of you met before? No, we have not, nor was I expecting the pleasure. Ah shit, you thought you were onto something for once. You wonder how many more levels of memory are buried, twisted under a blown synapse in your burned out brain. You have to move forward and give up on chasing down whatever buckwild theory you are inching toward there. There are real mysteries afoot with this stranger. This feels like a decisive moment if there ever was one. Um, well, that's definitely not a catfish, Roxy, so there's gotta be another answer here. Oh wait, you're an idiot. This is an adult. You've spent t you've been spending too much time with marginally supervised aliens and a lonely maroon boy recently that you forgot that Roxy probably lives with her parents. And it's 50-50 on the possibility of a stuffed grandma rose in somewhere in there if the pattern holds. It's feasible she could have told her mom about you? You play it safe, and instead of accusing anyone of, of online identity crime, you ask if Roxy is home. She stares at you for a moment, her lips slightly parted. You get the feeling she's not often caught off guard, and you wonder what it is you've done wrong now. 
Do you ever think you have lived through every possible iteration of an emotion, then one day a manifestation of narrative agency shows up on your doorstep to remind you that there is yet another way to experience the acute feeling of a particular loss? I like how this has been changing. It was first Catfish Roxy, now it's probably Roxy's mom. <laughs> you do what you do best and stare blankly at her, trying to figure out just what in the fuck that might mean. Oh, is that not a universal one? Well then, I can clarify. He has a roundabout way of saying no, she is not home, nor will she be for quite a while. I would offer to take a message for you, but with your bag of tricks, I think you can manage the wait. She winks at you conspiratorially, and you have never felt less like you were in awe playing with somebody. This has been fun, but I'm not the one you want. I'll go ahead and make myself scarce so things can start moving along. Unfortunately for me, my path is not as flexible as yours, or hers. You've wasted considerable time here as it is, and I have my own preparations to contend with. Scoot along before you touch something you shouldn't. She shuts the door and you stand, blank and useless, on the doorstep. Maybe this, is, this isn't the right house and that lady was just having a good time fucking with you? Jane had said she hadn't used Roxy's address in forever since Roxy didn't ever really seem to receive things she sent through the mail. And whoever this was didn't really give you any solid ev evidence that she knew what you were talking about. You take a minute to consider the cryptic shit that woman who is very probably not Roxy's mom just told you. You feel like a level 1 bug fu fuck idiot, taking on a side quest from the Indimac wizard so far beyond you that you feel like you should have just spent more time grinding first. It feels like that's what she was going for. Anyway, what do whatever she said was something like, you could manage the wait? Maybe this one's an issue of time, not space. It always seems to be one of those two bastards, huh? Well, luckily for you, you why is that L capitalized? Well, luckily for you, you have power over both. Might as well follow the only lead you have. You perch on the bridge over the river running in front of a house and fast forward, holding Roxy's name at the front of your mind. The years swirl by you in a visual cacophony. Buildings rise up around you. Lights flash, hot, red and hot. There's a rush of busy energy, the ebb and flow of a colonial tide, and this stillness. There we go. Right when you start to wonder if you've missed her, you feel it. You wait till it feels right and you stop. Holy shit, that was a while. You traveled forward in time from John's era to meet Jane, you guess, so you suppose it isn't the most unfathomable thing to have to do it again, but wow. The trees that surrounded you just a minute ago are gone, replaced by a sea of crumbling buildings and a low, skittery sound, like pressing your ear to an ant colony. The vibes out here are real bad. You hurry up and knock. The door opens slowly. Her hair is glorious. <laughs> also, she has a pumpkin. Good for her. Roxy. For sure it's Roxy this time. Peeks her head out, spots you, and then squints at the empty street behind you. Seeing no threat, she bumps the door open with her elbow and drops a huge pumpkin in your arms. She stumbles a bit over the door jam as she does it, and you almost don't catch the pumpkin in favor of reaching for her, but she steadies herself at the last moment and leans against the frame, unfazed. Here you go, little buddy. I appreciate you knocking. It's a lot more polite than the usual breaking and entering you guys do, so I picked out a nice juicy one for you. Oh, she thinks I'm a Prospidian, right? Because I look like one. <laughs> Don't go telling everyone to try this shit, though, or else I'll never get to sleep again in my life. I'll just be running produce to my door 24-7. Unloading snacks to every chess guy in existence without rest. Not by your eating noises for company. This is not all how you thought this would go, but you honestly should have known better than to do anything with your expectations but throw them in the trash can. So you roll with it and thank her for the pumpkin, calling her by name for max politeness. Oh yeah, because uh, they don't talk, really. You can't see much over the flagrantly large, large gorge you're struggling to keep hold of, but you feel her go still. Did she stop breathing? You crane your neck to peek over the pump, curve of the pumpkin and fuck. A given those expectations. You did not anticipate pure terror to be the emotion constructed on her face, but there it is. What shit did you just say to me? Uh, you said thank you, Roxy? You open your mouth again to introduce yourself as the friend Jane mentioned, but all your words shrivel up in your horrible mouth because Roxy has flattened herself against the doorframe. Her head tucked down like you're blinding her. I... What... You're not a... said my name. She slinks down to the floor and kind of rolls back inside, shutting the door behind her. You hear nothing, then a deep heaving sob. Oh yeah, cause... Has she ever talked to another person in person before? Do, do the kids ever, like, video chat or anything? Do they... Has she ever heard another voice? I have not thought of this before. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? You knock politely just once. Hold on a minute, I gotta... do something. Don't go anywhere! You hear nothing but footsteps trailing away into silence. It could be time to head out, but she told you to wait, so you do. You are nothing if not committed. About 20 minutes in, the low scuttering hum in the background fortifies itself into a more present rumble. 
From around corners and out of dilapidated doors comes the source. The patter of feet, a low and unintelligible whisper, and the clicking of joints. It's people, and they look like you. Well, almost. It's more that y you look like if a child drew them. Their simple frames made simpler with softer edges. Your skin is actually skin, right? They chitter around you and you squish your arm meats to make sure. Yeah, you aren't chitinous. Whew. Wait, or is that bad? You're trying to process whether you're relieved to have the Bali makeup you thought you did, or if you're sad that the space of time you thought you might have... Finally found your kin was so fleeting. You don't get a chance to sort through it fully because the new guys are surrounding you and they look hungry. It might well be you or the pumpkin here, so you hold it out to them and hope for the best. They take it and, chirping what seems to be their thanks, shrink back into the night. You check them off your mental list of predators and sit for a beat. It feels like you're waiting for more than Roxy's return, like this is a moment of choice. Jesus fuck, you went to all this effort to try things anew and what did it get you? Nothing. You've never had such a spectacular failure to connect upon first meeting someone. So what are you supposed to do now? You wait, but the familiar push against your ribcage to decide something doesn't come. What is this drive to make you choose anyway? What if you just wanted to sell on your ass and do nothing, huh? What if you're tired of choosing when every choice you make takes you further from anything good? And who knows, maybe you're supposed to do nothing. Maybe that's what your plan was all along, huh, tough guy? You don't know who that little jab was aimed at, but you want nothing more in this moment than to petulantly slap the reins of choice off your shoulders. If only there were reins to slap. God, impotent rage is the worst. After a minute of, minute of continued seething at nothing, you feel it. Uh, sure, let's break in. Don't tell me what to do, you're not my mom. Okay. Uh, talk to the chess guys? More than you know, Chungus? Give up and see if Nepeto wants to hang out? Okay. Alright then. Blinking, you feel a desire to act up away. It's replaced by a tingly giddiness at the victory of your, what, inertia? You'll be kind to yourself and call it fortitude and resolution instead. I, I'm starting to worry about our character. They're having some troubles. I mean, I've been worrying about them for a long time. Since, like, Hive Swap, but... <laughs> You're gonna see this shit through. You do what you promised and wait. Eventually, you curl up on the welcome mat and pass out like a stray kitten. At some point in the night, you open your eyes for one blurry moment as the chess guy lays a blanket over you. Aw, thank you. Oh, you're back, hey. The creak of the door next to your ear will jol jolt you awake. Towering above you in the sharp, bright rays of morning sun is Roxy. Oh shit, you are real. I came in here so I could prove to past tipsy me that it was just a daymare or some shit, but... Now here you are, and here I am. So, let's dig right in. Did you or did you not say human English words including my name to me last night? You, uh, you did do that? Well, time to reckon with this then, I guess. I might still be a little buzzed, so I'm just gonna see how this plays out. Stick with me. She beckons you inside and scr you scramble to your feet and follow her. That's a nice wizard. I like that wizard. All that waiting paid off, didn't it? You, you have a concerning amount of martini glasses, though, Roxy. You emanate smugness in every direction as you walk, just in case there are any entities or narrative concepts around that have the capacity for feeling slighted by such a thing. You trail behind her into the living room, explaining how you knew her name via her friends. Oh, okay, that makes more sense, Elmeo. <laughs> That'd make you the one who convinced Jane of the stuff about a reality that I've been trying to get her to see for quite some fucking time. The benefits of being able to, s to be there to show her in person, I guess. Aw. That, that face makes me sad. She stands up next to the couch, her shoulders bunched up, popping her fingers. She isn't looking at you. She told me you could time travel, but she failed to mention the part about how you're some kind of alien. Alien, sorry to offend. No worries. But if I'm being real, it's not like our communication style is full and truly without gaps on a normal day. So this checks out. She scrunches her face up and groans. Ugh. I'm so sorry. I'm being a jelly belly double rag downer. Elmo, what in the fuck is wrong with me? Here you are, a friend in the flesh. And I'm just over here whining about way about my other friends whom I love very much. This is just a lot, Elmeo. I've daydreamed all the potential friend meeting scenarios I thought might ever happen. Winnie and all kebabs of my four f whole friends whisking me off to a friend's sojourn. I just didn't consider a new one might show up on my door disguised as one of my little neighbors, so... Yeah, you're super sorry for how last night went down. And for what's worth, you've made friends with, a, a, like, a lot of people. And all the friend-making skills you've learned on your travels didn't save you from fucking this one up. There's no foolproof, 
foolproof way- that's a hard word to say. Foolproof way to do it, you figure. You would know as a proven fool. Elamil, that is good to hear. Still, I'm sorry about ditching you right off the bat. I went to find a small sip of courage which turned into a swig of courage. And that became a whole ass ball of courage, which as you know can happen. So I did not so much come back outside to confront my harsh real real realities, realities, namely you, as I did confront my soft real titties of pillow on the floor next to my bed. Anyway, it's just that I've never heard my name come out of someone's mouth right next to me in real life before. Yeah. You don't comment on the booze thing. Y'all just met, you don't want to come off too preachy just yet. You try another angle instead. You could always try the meeting thing again? Like acting it out? Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> of course you didn't mean literally going back and redoing it. Um, this is a salvageable situation. You don't want to waste a redo if you don't have to. Lo what? What you mean is you rarely get shit right the first try anyway. Might as well give each other a clean slate. You hold your fist up and knock the air in front of you. You hope she c thinks this is cool and not lame, since you kind of just leapt into it to avoid thinking too much about all your false starts. You don't have to worry for long because she smiles and it's brilliant. The shivering tension in her body shifts from anxious to excited as she hops a bit, getting into the moment. She breathes in, smoothing her shirt, then puts a hand to her ear. Oh? Is that knocking on my door? Whomstever could it be? She bends dramatically in welcome as she opens the invisible door and clasps her hands together as she focuses her bright gaze on you. Oh. My. Fucking. G. Welcome to my abode, stranger. Soon to be more than stranger. Wink wink. Get on in here and let's get to frienditude. That might be coming on a little strong for typical company, but luckily you are as friend thirsty as they come, even without all goofball nuts force even without all golf ball nuts forcing you to be. You introduce yourself and step over the pretend threshold and hand extended. Ro oh hi. Roxy takes it and pulls you into a fast tight hug. I want to hug Roxy. She's wonderful. You wrap your noodling arms around her and return it, as tight as you can. At first you tell yourself she needs it. After all, you can feel her trembling back, her unsteady breath. A minute passes and you realize your hands are shaking too. When was the last time you just held someone? Just let yourself be held. I feel personally attacked. <laughs> I'm a, a bit um, touch averse and I've not hugged anyone and I've not willingly hugged another person in a long time. <laughs> the moment is quiet. You know it's an awkward pose. The two of you standing draped on each other in the middle of the, her house and you realize belatedly that lying on the floor there's a window like the one you fell through right before you. Jesus, how did you get out of Doc Scratch's apartment? Now is not the time to think about that. But it's good. Calm. You could keep going, honestly, but she steps back and tucks a puff of hair back into place, clearing her throat. She's still looking away from you, but she's grinning. Yeah. That was much better. A couple of friendships starting pros, am I right? They'll write guides to friendship about the two of you, you say. She sits down on the couch and gestures for you to join her, so you do. Now that you're settled, what she said right before you, you did your little skit hits your brain right in the face. Has she really never had anyone else around to speak to? Like, never? Never have I ever. What about the uh, chess guys, as she called them? The ones she mistook you for? Oh, we can communicate for sure. But not with words, really. I don't mean anything bad about them by it. They're really sweet when they aren't sneaking into my home. Plus, I don't blame them for their ways. On account of them being brought in by the Batter Witch and sum sum summarily forgotten. But at IDK, we're not really in the same wavelength. So it just kind of fucked me up when I thought one of them was looking at me in my eyeballs and saying my name like it was. Like I was. Lo whew. Sorry, I'm still mega new to this. Her eyelids flare closed as she sh shivers. Man, you thought Jake had it rough, but at least he had his grandma for a bit before she died. You wonder to yourself why she didn't seem to have someone like that. You're about to do some mental math and see if you can work some connections out, but she gathers herself and interrupts you before you can do anything too smart. And to be clear, I can def see the diff, diff between you guys now. Though you don't not look like them, TBH. It's just that you have a quality of, like, personhood to you. Anyway, the point is, the res resbimlance is certif certifiable. But you're like the velveteen chess guy. The what? Just because you're soft? Well, well yeah, that too. But no, you know the velveteen rabbit? It's one of the few books my mom re left with me that wasn't super dense and cerebral wizard fiction. Wizard. So I read a lot of it before I got grown enough to really appreciate the complexities of the cerebral wazard genre. Yeah, you know, I like wazard, actually. No, you don't know that one. But you're constantly searching for meaning in your fucking life, so you will definitely check it out if there's someone like you in it. And she just mentioned her mom. She's not still around then, is she? Nah. Batter bitch killed her a long time ago. Before I ever got here. Back when society was uncollapsed and everything. 
But she knew I was coming, so she left me pretty well stocked with snacks and reed material and booze to last a lifetime. Though I have put a considerable dent in that last category, so we shall see if her planning skills truly were up to par when all was said and drunk. I thought maybe I was gonna get to meet her and all my other friends in this big IRL multiplayer game I was gonna kick ass at, but now, IDK, I guess I'm not playing anymore. Shit. You jump up as you put two and two together. You went to the past before, or, well, you came from the past, from Jaden and Jake's time, which Roxy already knows. But spatially, you were here in this house, then, that time. There was a woman who lived here then. You thought she was Roxy's mom at first, but then may you maybe convinced yourself that she wasn't, since a few hundred years happened between her and now? You don't know, a lot was going on. Oh, MFG, what? Was she beautiful? Hold on, let me show you. Roxy roots around a bookshelf or something, and your brain starts expanding at a rapid rate. Concepts that have been hovering on the periphery of your mind suddenly converge. You already knew that Jane and Jake's deceased grandparents were your friends from the past, but you had considered this, since you didn't know Roxy in lived in the future then. Of course all this shit's connected. Of course that would make- Did she look like this? She hands you a book, cover up and to show the author photo. There she is. Younger than she was when you first saw- when you saw her last night, but older than when she was when you first met. You can't help saying her name out loud. Rose. Oh my god! Why did grown-up her- Fuck, sorry. Why did grown-up her say that she'd never- yet yeah, they never met before, though? Is she not the same person? Are we putting it together, finally? Fuck the earlier math you were doing. This is way bigger than 2 plus 2. This is some serious mental calculus. You wiggle all your brain worms at once and it hits you. The weight felt different than normal when you hopped from Jake's house to wherever that one place was. How it happened when you brought Jake home again, too, like your guts dissolved so sideways and how they rearranged slower once you land. Landed. Had it happened when you first landed in Jane's yard, too? You're probably too turned around to even notice then. You know Roxy's super hyped right now, but you tell her you gotta check something. Do some science. You'll be right back. Use that backward again. What did I tell you about coming back here? And now she's officially old Rose. Okay. Get your grubby time fingers out of my pie before you get caught. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Have a good day, ma'am. Okay, she's mad what you expected. It also felt like an everyday wiggly belly time jump, which you also expected. You pop out of there, this time concentrating on your friend Rose, just a day after you last hung out. You should just feel yourself zoom further backward toward her, right? Off you go and- wrong. It's that feeling again. The sideways dissolvement and reconstruction of your crudely rendered bowels. Oh, it's you. Long time no see. For you, I assume. Funny thing about that is no, actually, but you'll have to explain later. You apologize for paying your so short a visit and head back to Roxy. The feeling accompanies you, you lag yet again. You pop back into Roxy's living room a fraction of a second after you left. Those brain worms are wiggling at top speeds. Damn, B, I know you don't know this about me, but I love science projects. I got a whole lab and everything. I'm hex of qualified. Wanna take me with you? Oh, sorry, you already went. Fuck, there I go blinking and missing all the good shit. For the best, to be honest, or I would have sat here worrying that you'd never come back. Abandonment crisis totes averted for the moment. High five. What a rad science fact- What rad science fact did you learn? Was it about my mom? You take a deep breath. You're kind of laying down the knowledge tracks a second before your brain cart rolls down them, so you're hoping this makes sense as you piece it together word by word. You think this is a different universe? Yep, there we go. Yo, what? You've met the woman Roxy thinks of as mom, but you also have a friend named Rose from a while ago. She's friends with Jake's grandma and Jake's Jane's grandpa, and you're pretty sure that she even read you some of the same fucking book at one point. But they can't be the same exact people, even if, even if they all look the same. Things feel different there than they do here. Like looking in an outside out- Like looking- Like looking in an inside out mirror with every cell of your body. Those definitely exist, don't worry. Hells to the air. Yeah. I'm following you. Would love to gaze inside one of those mirrors and flip my shit some way. Would be a liar if I said I hadn't- had, if I'd never thought about that as a general concept. But that's besides the point. More importantly, what you're saying is I have double the moms I thought I had yesterday? And you're also saying you can, like, go visit any and all moms you whenever you want? Just go on a mom visiting, visiting bender? No rules, just moms? And I can come along? Well, no, there are a couple rules, but other than that, yeah. Damn, you thought you might take more convincing. Look around to all my gear and cat clones and general living situation, bud. All I'm saying is none of that is particularly hard to believe. And after all the grief finder trying to get Janie to believe me, it'd be pretty fucking stupid not to mention rude as heck of me to not believe you now. You're my friend. Huh, <sighs> that's a relief. You grasp on your grasp on the shit is tenuous at best, so it's good she's as easy to win over. It is one of my best qualities. Or at least one of my biggest ones. Oh, though, before she gets too excited, one of the rules does seem to be that her mom in this universe doesn't want to be visited, though. That's kind of a big one. Oh. 
I see. Well, did she say why? I mean, if y'all already hung out, what's so bad about one more chill sesh? Unless, IDK, it's okay for you, but... You can see her starting to blame herself, so you cut her off. It's definitely not that she didn't seem interested. More like she couldn't? She shooed you away every time you tried to say hi, like she was afraid you'd fuck shit up. Which, to be fair, you do regularly. She said she was preparing for something. You look around. Or someone. Ah, yeah, okay. Makes sense. It's funny, actually. No, I'm joking, your, your leg, it sucks. But, like, situationally, it's funny. Because that game I mentioned that Janie's off destroying? A week ago, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to play. I was pretty ready to go to desperate measures to not play it at all if I'm being totes honest. Both. But then when Jane said uh, she met you and was all hellbent on doing some righteous smite into the whole company, IDK, it hit me that I kind of did want to play after all. Like, I thought maybe I'd meet my mom in the game and I'd finally get to talk to this lady I built my whole ass sense of self around. Get to see how she is in the real actual life and figure it out how bad I fucked up in my version of it. Well, anyway. We aren't playing, so it didn't matter. I've been trying to be a good friend to lend my hexer skills to Jane's, cause... But it hurt, I don't know how... To... But it hurt, and I don't know how to tell her. And then you showed up, or my options shifted like 75 more times. I barely got time to come to terms with it being okay to want something before it gets swiped away from me, <laughs> Oh, Shit, you really didn't mean to mess around with our expectations. You should've kept your mouth shut till you figured out what this all meant. She smells at you, and you don't have to have known her for long to tell that it's forced. Yeah. Ah, shit, you can fix this. Uh, we should not visit Mom Rose. That, that, I, she really doesn't want us to. We don't want to fuck with the timeline more than we already are. Moms are cool, but so are friends. Can we take her to, all, to um, the Kid Rose? It's not just moms you tell her. You can definitely take her to go see any of the friends she already has, too. Well, like right now? If she wants to, yeah. You're done for whatever. Ah, uh, is it weird to be so nervous about that? Don't get me wrong, I want to see the fuck out of some friends. Pop my eyes right on those guys. Fought, of course, by hogs. Hugs. It's just a really big thing, and I'm feeling a little dizzy even thinking about picking one. Yeah, you haven't met all our friends yet, but you know just enough about all their various dynamics for that to make sense. And hey, there's no need to rush. You can take her somewhere else, just the two of you. That way she can still get out of the house and see something new, and you guys can sit and talk through who to see rather than leaping right in. Yeah, okay. That sounds chill. Where to, then, my cosmic taxi friend? Let's start with somewhere chill, you say, and she nods. Like many things about Earth, there are places you know exist but you have no memory of ever having been to. They're just a part of your cultural knowledge, learned by your past self and later subsumed into the ever-widening miasma of your mind. You pick one of those places. Somewhere that feels like, at one point, it could have been something you cared about. Oh wow, that's a nice... Sun sunset? It looks like a forest at first, but the pine trees have been shaped by wind. You turn and the earth in front of you butts up against the ancient stone of an outcropping. It stretches out below your feet in a long striated arc until it curves into nothingness. Beyond it is an endless sea of mountains, rolling and rolling, fading deep green to blue as they turn into the sky. The sun is just below the horizon. Oh! It's so... open! Her voice is the quietest it's been since you met her. Her bright, boisterous charm lulled into awe. You ask her if she thinks this will work. Are you shitting me? Buster, I have never seen a more gorgeous, gorgeous thing in my entire existence. We are gonna take a fucking seat and soak in this nature with every one of our pores. The visible ones, I mean. Don't go getting any ideas. Wink. Or do, to be honest, you could be doing naked cartwheels right now and I wouldn't even notice because as I said previously, my eyes are slurping up these sights. Fair, you're not agile enough for that clothed or otherwise, but you're glad she likes it here. The two of you sit for a while soaking it in. This is a schedule-free life you lead, so however long it takes for her to talk is fine with you. It doesn't take too long, though. So, you met Jane? Jake too, if I'm not wrong. They talked about you some, but they've been more busy hanging out with you than talking about you if, um... If I'm Beth. How about, um... Strider. Uh, we have not met Mr. Strider yet. He is saved for later because of reasons. He hasn't said anything about you, and I like to think he'd tell me if he got the first visitor of his whole life, but maybe he won't be ready to share with me. It's a pretty big thing for me and him. For him, it'd be even bigger. She seems poised to continue, continue hypothesizing about him for a while, so you go ahead and tell her that no, you haven't met him. But you sure I've heard a lot about him from Jake. Ah, uh, hello, yeah. What, would you get a different version of things from her? Elameo. How far into this drama do you want to get? You're already pretty far entrenched as far as you can tell, so she might as well fill you in on the rest. Okay, so. I'm about to lay it all out for you here. Because I trust you and also I don't know what to do about all and some farm fresh opinions might be just what I need. 
The way she turns to you and clutches her hands together, launching directly into the story, you'd never think think she was new to slumber party gossip. We got quite the love quadrangle go down this friend group. Janie and Dirk are both into Jake. Which, like, fair. He's very sweet and a hunk no matter how you slice it. Jake, as you may know, is a wild card here. No idea who he might go for. Which is also fair. If I am to continue to be a referee here, because Jane is a stone-cold fox, luscious babe going hecka places, and Dirk is... Whew. He's just about perfect. So... She trails off and wrinkles up her nose as she looks back out over the mountains. Her gaze is heavy with longing. Hmm. Don't you hum me? What? Just seems like she's leading up to her spot in the quadrangle is all. Yeah, well... Honestly, I think Roxy's attracted to all three of them. <laughs> that might be some headcanon slipping in there, but... <laughs> I'm in there. Like in the last one I mentioned. Ah, oh, okay. Well, you're doing it again. Oh, just for a minute, you couldn't tell which direction she was headed. You thought she might be jealous of Dirk himself the way she looked when she said all that, but it's that she has feelings for him? You're just trying to keep up. Roxy laughs and covers her face. Goddamn, call out here on top of the fucking world. You're not wrong, I guess. In a way. Not to continue the vicious call-up, but earlier it was her mom that she said she was trying to be like, and now it's Dirk? You're like the president of the universe trying to figure out what, uh, who you are and trying on different ways of being to see what fits. So no judgment there. It's just that it seems like she has a lot of questions about who she wants to be, which is legit as hell. That's life, baby. Yeah, I guess that's the whole thing, you know? I wanted to be like her because she's my family and, like, the only person I knew about for so long. Then I met him and I was like, oof, there's more lockable options? Who knew? Maybe I could, uh... Idy Kate, I do have feelings for him, to be sure, but you're right. Sometimes with him it does get all mixed up. You ever not sure you want to be somebody or be with somebody? I mean, I like the me I made from nothing and I don't want every single piece of his bullshit, of course, but... He's like the shadow just out of my range of vision, like... Some kind of what if. M me if I had just been... Ugh. I don't know if this makes any fucking sense outside my own head, though. What's that you said about the turnways mirror? Let's hop on that universe jump and try and see where it takes us. Metaphorically, I mean. I'm not ready to move a single ash cheek off the spit and rock yet. It's all metaphorical anyway. Well, not the multiple universes thing, that's pretty much a fact as far as you can tell. But the turning yourself inside out bit. Whatever it is about him that she feels pulling at her, this thing she wants for herself, is probably bigger than him anyway. He's just the person who made her notice it, same as it was with her mom. And anyway, it turns out a lot of options are unlockable once you realize some locks were in your brain to begin with. That's a good sentence. Damn, buddy. Is this what it's always like to try and talk to friends face to face? Hauling up piles of meaningful truths left and right? Or is this just a you thing? You have absolutely no way of knowing, but you do know it happens to you a lot. It's different every time though, and it never gets old. Good, because I feel like this got up layer one of all my thoughts and feelings about this stuff. I'm a little afraid to dig deeper, but if you're there with me, maybe we'll find some shit in there and not just big empty question marks. Shit, yeah, you can go for round two whenever. Your game di your game keep digging at Diddy all day long if she wants, though sh they did come up here to decide who to visit, the right? Does this mean the choice is dark? God, I don't know, man. Yeah, maybe. Eventually. I want to see all three of them, plus another friend I haven't mentioned yet. Oh yeah, Callie. <laughs> but you'd get along with her because she's also an alien. But I might want to start with my kid mom, who's also visible. Not yet, though. Well, I never would have thought I'd be putting this off any longer than I had to, but... Me and you has been one of the best things I ever did. I want to sit and stew in this friend soup with you for a bit longer. And then savor the bites of my other friend soups when I can. However ready to eat I might or might not be. Shit, this metaphor is getting away from me. Can you take it? Can you take over? You're not sure how salvageable it is, but yeah, you're down to simmer with her as long as she wants. And you think she and her team mom will get along very well. Shared mom trauma and drama included whenever it comes time to introduce them. She shouldn't worry about being perfectly ready either. You haven't skipped ahead to see who she becomes, but you're pretty confident she has it in her to be someone she can be proud of and comfortable being. Someone that can look back on this Roxy with kindness, too, no matter what choices she ends up making. You're gonna make me cry again. Please no. Ugh. Also, not that I'm gonna forget today ever, but I should document. She pulls her phone out and holds it to frame her shot. She's glowing in the live sunrise. You watch her, you watch the sun, you watch the fog curl through the valleys below. Okay, now a selfie. Aw, I want to see this picture. I hope it's the end shot. She drapes her arm over your shoulder and points the camera at both of you. Work it. Oh yeah, that is cute as fuck. She messes with her phone, opening a chat with someone whose handle you don't recognize. You wonder, as she sends the photo there, why if it's the alien friend. It'd be cool if Roxy was friends with a troll you hadn't met yet. Are we going to meet the cherubs? Or at least Calliope? 
I, I don't think we'll meet a Caliborn. That would be awkward on many levels. But I'd love to meet Calliope. Hey, you there? I guess not, but that's okay. I just wanted to say hi. I know we didn't talk much about the game not being on anymore last time we got to chatting, but I know we were both feeling it. And I got so many more updates for when you're back online, so get hype. And check out this choice S view I'm peeping right now as a preview. Think of you totally. Aw, they're cute together. It's time to get comfy on this rock. You may end up being here for a while since Roxy is not quite ready to get zapped anywhere else. Which, when you consider it, is fine. There's a difference, you think, between inaction and patience. There are small weighty changes made in stillness. You worried you choose too much, and Roxy afraid she was robbed of choice from the start, meet in the middle. She pockets the phone and grins at you. You lean back on your elbows and tilt your head up towards the sky. Aww. That's super cute. I like the shading too. Alright. Um. Let's go ruin everything. Let's go visit Adult Rose. Hey, who knows, maybe your mom wouldn't mind another visit if you brought Roxy along. Like, maybe she was just annoyed when it was your bothers himself. She was definitely a little sad when she, talk when she talked about Roxy living so far away, temporarily speaking. You really think? I mean, if you don't think she'd mind. I'd be 100% da down, locked and loaded, ready to family bond right the fuck now. Before I get too nervous to change my mind. Should we partake in a celebratory sippy before we go? She reaches under her couch and pulls out a bottle of vodka. You make a non-committal noise as you work out how to respond. You call Jake out for enabling this, so you don't want to do the same. It's delicate, though. What am I thinking? She'll probably have her own stash anyway. Well, that's what she'd have left such vast quantities of stuff for me to reckon with. <laughs> yeah, you guess? Though maybe she meant for her to bust into it when she was a bit older, or like, maybe for special occasions? Well, sell up and we can add that one to the list of questions to ask her. It's gonna be pretty far down, though, so I- though, I got a lot. You extend your hand, she takes it, and off you go. You choose to point a little further ahead in Rose's timeline, just to give her time to miss you, just in case. I hope this isn't, like, the day Mom Rose dies or something like that. You step to the doorstep and tease Roxy into it. She plasters herself to the wall next to the door, breathing heavy. You take care of the knocking part. Oh shit, boy. This is it. Look at all these fucking trees around my house, hopey shit. Hi. Oh, this is the good music from that, uh... S. Ro Roxy Sleepwalk, I think? I don't remember the title of the music itself, but it was the one... Yeah, that one. Old Rose comes to the door, and from the look in her face as she stares you down, she has absolutely not missed you even a little bit. Ah, uh, my incorrigible male person. What did I tell you before? You should not be here, or now. Her imperial bane of my existence may not be paying attention to what you do with your friends, but she's keeping tabs on me after your last visit. It isn't safe for you here, and I can't have you compromise this location. From the side, Roxy exhales. Rose turns. Her voice is soft and broken, snow falling from branches. Oh. Sorry, Miss Mom. Mom Lond? Roxy. We didn't mean to bust down operations. I just wanted to meet you. No, I know. I know it. And despite the circumstances, I'm so glad to have been able to see you too. More than you know. But you can't stay. Yeah, okay, of course. No, yeah, no worries. I'm sorry. You have to go right now, before- A light streaks through the clouds and you crane your neck to see it, but Rose grabs you both and drags you inside, slamming the door. Shit, this is bad, right? Fuck, she's even faster than I thought. I have to call Dave, I have to- Oh, Mom- Mom Rose and Bro Dave know each other, I'm so happy. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they mentioned they knew each other, but they're actually on like a first name basis, which is cool. <laughs> She stops muttering to herself and speaks instead to you and to Roxy with a sharp, decisive turn of her head. What's done is done. Get back before there's nothing to get back to. But... Rose touches her knuckles to Roxy's cheek and you feel like you shouldn't be here for this moment. Shouldn't have brought her here. Shouldn't have done anything ever. You never learn your fucking lesson. You do the only good thing left for you to do and you take Roxy's hand. She's still sputtering, pulling you as she reaches towards Rose. Oh, that's a cool picture! Oh my goodness! <laughs> There's a low rumble. The house shakes. Rose has pulled some knitting needles out of nowhere and they're sparking with energy. Now. I love this music. This is one of my favorite tracks. Which is sad because I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> when you open your eyes again, you're in Roxy's version of the same living room. Or almost that. You know it's hers. Those decorated more sparsely and there's a corner of the house that's just fucking gone. Rebuilt how the surrounding buildings were with a rickety chess guy patch job. 
We fucked with the timeline. Shit. Shit. You stop serving the timeline damage and instead look to Roxy. She's just standing, staring, blank. Her hand is over her mouth. We just got Rose killed, didn't we? You're so, so sorry. You never should have suggested they do that. It's probably best for you to go. All you do is make things worse. The slackness in her face turns to panic. No, 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 please. I, sh I shouldn't have asked to go. It's my fault. Don't leave me. In your guts, you know you're the one in the wrong. You are supposed to be the responsible time traveler. You don't know how to make her see this without making her, her feel worse. She runs and opens a cabinet, then a second- oh no. And a third. Her movement's more frantic each time. Eventually she surfaces successful. Oh, thank fuck, the caboose is still here. Always looking out for me, that mom. Look, it's okay. We can still have fun. You don't have to go. Please don't go. She's crying as she talks, her voice climbing higher with fear. Her smile's begging you. You know you have to look later. Check whatever corners of the internet or historical doc documents Roxy has laying around to see what happened, but you feel in your belly that will only confirm what you suspect. It'd be better if she hated you. You're not ready to face what you did, so you take the bottle Roxy is holding out towards you. Take a long, burning swig. More for you means less for her, you hope, as you pass the ball back. Regret. Oh man, this is awful. <laughs> I feel so bad. Ugh. All right, let's let's have a much. Well, the auto save is gone because there were all those other choices. So, give me a second, and I'll get back to that first choice. All right, catch the catfish in her river flies. You know this, how the shit goes. It's time to sit down, just the two of you, to talk through some hard truths before asking Jane if they want to meet for a tense but hopefully cathartic confrontation, which you'll have to film, of course. Shit, okay, it's go time. You take a deep breath and call her out like the slick sleuth you are. You know she's been pretending to be friends with Jane online. Oh, this is far cuter than I expected. But this situation, your little self, I mean. I have in no way been doing that. It is more refreshing than I would have thought, though, to be reminded that there are dramas with stakes like these out there. In the midst of all this. Her eyebrows pull together, She gazes. her gaze goes right through you. You turn around, but there's nothing out there. While some of my moves, both personal and political, have brought my path across her, uh, family, I haven't interfered directly with Jane's life, and I don't intend to start. Can you say the same, friend? Is there a way you justify the strings you're pulling? I won't stop you, of course. I have my own matters to attend to. This is only food for thought, thought and I can see that you are intellectually underfed. It just might be worth your while to contemplate the repercussions of the paths you're on. Do you have any further questions, or did you come all this way just for that? You really aren't sure. Man, it seems like all you do is contemplate your path. You feel all turned around inside. Talking to whoever this is makes you feel like you stayed up too late staring at the moon and got all fucked up on existence so you felt you were too stupid to think anymore. But like, in a good way. You stare blankly at her while you try to remember your purpose. I will go ahead and take that as a no. Good luck, friend. She shuts the door and you turn, bewildered, back towards the long driveway. Well, okay then. You sure met someone. It definitely wasn't Roxy and you don't think whatever has just happened counts as friendship, so you guess this one's a loss. Was it because you cheated at traveling like a regular person? Friendless or rudderless, you start the long, pointless walk of penis to somewhere. What just happened? Yeah. We are confused now. Alright, so. That was Roxy. I love Roxy. Roxy's wonderful. Like I said, my favorite alpha kid. Into the future. You vibed with Roxy on the edge of a vast alpine woodland. Vest. And warning is probably for underage drinking. And maybe... I don't know. Would, would neglect count? She lives alone. Alcoholism, underage drinking. Yep. Alright, so. Roxy. I love Roxy. That- oh. That- that first bad ending. That hurt. I almost cried. <laughs> uh. Roxy is definitely my favorite, um, favorite alpha kid. Which is funny, cause, um... When I first started reading Act 6, back in, like, 2011, my favorite alpha kid was Dirk at first, though I think that was just my carryover of feelings for Dave. I was assuming Dirk would be like Dave 2.0. But really, really Roxy is more like Dave than uh, Dirk is. Or maybe Dave is more like Roxy, it depends on how you want to look at it. But yeah, I like Dave and Roxy. They're the best. My favorite human characters. I love them. Any com time they have a conversation in canon is the best thing for me. <laughs> they just bounce off each other so well. I, I don't think we'll get to see them talk in Pester Quest, but if they do, I will be very happy. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!